Hello guys, welcome to Office Boy Builder. I hope you are well. On today's episode, we are going to be removing some old radiators and replacing them with some new radiators. So I've, I'm not a plumber, DIY channel, don't forget it. In this house, we have some like tons of really old ones and they're, in fact, I'll show you, super thin, like single skin, don't do a great job and we are replacing them with ones that are almost three times as big and have a much higher BTU count and are just generally more efficient, basically. They'll do a better job, they'll do it quicker and they will give out more heat. So really looking forward to this because it's now probably the second week in October. So we're double digits October now and it's gonna start getting colder soon. We've also, coming up in a separate video, we'll show you we're going to be putting a porch on the front here as well. So just outside of this, we're gonna be installing a porch. So that'll be fun. Make sure you subscribe and follow for that because that's gonna be good. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So this first part I'm gonna be doing on my own. It's really simple. I've drained down the system. And now that I've drained that down, I'm going to be removing the old radiators and I'm gonna be putting the new ones on the wall and then all of the pipe work and the plumbing and making sure that it all actually works. So I'll flip you around and I'll show you what these radiators look like. Ignore the piece of plasterboard. That was from one of these last videos here where we've done all the plasterboarding on the wall. So that's left over. But these, these are the radiators. So you can see how thin they are. Like waffa thin, a bit thicker at the top, but ultimately ridiculously thin. This one is especially long, which is great, but we're replacing them with this. All right, this is a K2 radiator. It's the same height, it's obviously just sitting on the floor. It's the same height as this one, so they're all 600 high. And they are all 100 mil deep, so 10 centimeters deep, and they've got double fans. So they've got a fan here, a vein here, and a vein here. And it is just the same length. So this one is an absolute beast. This radiator weighs about 70 kilos, just, just shy of 70 kilos. 2.4 meters, you can see there, so it's a double radiator. I can't remember what the BTU count was on this. So that's good. So we've got those, and then for all of the bedrooms in my wife's studio, we've got these ones here. So all the same, they all match. They're all slightly different sizes and shapes. Well, in terms of length, they're all 600 high, they're all 100 deep. So yeah, I'm going to be installing these. So I think this one is coming up into the bedroom. I'm gonna do my son's bedroom first because it's the biggest and most open space and it'll just make my life a little bit easier, to be honest. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll probably set you up on a time-lapse. This is gonna be a little bit time-lapse heavy. And you can see how much these things weigh, 40 kilos, so that'll be fun. No need to go to the gym today. That one's going in my daughter's room that's going to become my office. This one here is gonna be going in the side extension where we have done a whole load of the work recently. If you haven't seen that, I'll post a video to it up here. And then the other one of these is going to be going in our bedroom. So two bedrooms, the ensuite uh, guest room, and a studio. My wife's studio here actually has a double radiator. So this one here, it's an old style one, but it is, there's one and then another, like, so it is, it is a double, and it actually gets really quite warm in here, so that's okay. And then in the back of the house, we don't really need one because the whole of this floor here is one massive radiator. And then this space here is a playroom and, oh yeah, it was my son's birthday the other day. It gets really, really warm. So uh, the, the need for replacing that, which is a really long radiator, although it's a single skin like the one in the hallway, it just wasn't necessary. We don't need to, uh, you know, make it any bigger. And all of this gets heated all the way through into there and into there in the bathroom. So, so that space just doesn't need it. So we can leave, we can go without on that. Right, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna carry this up, carry this, the one up in here, and I'll see you up there in a second. Up in the room, and uh, this is the first radiator that I'm gonna be taking off. This one comes away from the wall quite a bit, which is really handy. You know, this has got a big kind of holding arm here that spaces it away. Because these are so much thicker than the old ones, we're gonna to have to do some jiggery pokery with the pipe work here. 
which is fine. That's that's kind of part of it. I don't I don't mind that so much. And in fact, you can see that the pipe here is bent at an angle. It's further away from the wall here than it is here. It kind of leans this way. So that might actually make it a bit easier for me to get the new one installed and fitted. The other thing you'll notice here is that there's, you know, the, the, the valve there. On this side, we have the valve, plus we have a union fitting here. There's like an extender, a union extender. The reason for that is this pipework was almost in, certainly installed and the radiators will have been measured in imperial and would have been a slightly different size rather than what these are, which is all metric and they're all kind of a nice uniform round numbered size, doesn't work in Imperial. So that is what we're kind of up against. I don't really like plumbing, if I'm honest. I can get my head around electrics, but I struggle with plumbing just because everything's 15 mil, 12 mil, quarter inch, half inch, one inch. Like it's just, there's just too many different variations and too many different types and I don't know them all to be able to be comfortable that what I'm doing is right and accurate and correct. So I'd much rather have a professional help me with the, the bits that I can't quite get my noodle around and then I can do the simple stuff like taking it off the wall and whatever else. So I'm gonna get you set up on a time lapse. I will fiddle around with this, take it off and I will then put this new one on the wall. That was a fairly long time lapse, I appreciate, but hopefully it was of use and value to you. I've got the lock shield on this side, and I've got the smart thermostatic radiator valve on this side. Typically it would be the other way around. Normally the left-hand side of the radiator would have the thermostatic radiator valve, and the lock shield would be on the right, but that wasn't the case in this bedroom, and I wasn't going to uh, try and change things around. So. I just followed what was uh, in place in my raid in my house. I encourage you to double check if you're unsure. You'll see how much further, you know, there's a gap here like that, which what we'll probably have to do is I reckon come up in with a, an elbow and up and in so it will kind of go down like this, something like that. I'll speak to Nick about it, see what he thinks, see what he says. And then the same on this side as well. You know, it may well be that we cut the pipe off here and get an elbow that comes up and then another one that, you know, get two elbows and that will take care of the fact that it's at a slight angle and a bit further back. But I'm very happy with it. I am really pleased with how sturdy it feels and also how level it is, which is nice. Very pleased, very happy. So I'm kind of calling that one done really. I'm calling that one done. I've got a little bit of tidying up to do, but other than putting these on, these are for, these are the bleeding keys for the, for the radiator so it can bleed any air out of them. Those can go up at the top here. What I might do though, is I might actually change these for those Aladdin vents that have the holes in a, in a one-way valve in them that allow air out, but not water. I'll get to those in time. I'm not gonna do that. I'll put those on for now. But yeah, I was happy with that. 
it's uh, it's all come out. So I'll move on, move on to the next one. So I'm back in the side extension. If you haven't seen any of the work on this, check out this up here. You'll see we've done an ensuite bathroom. We've done this room. I'm not going to show you any of that now. Here we have the pipes, but no radiator. So in this instance, it's not quite the same as replacing it. So I should, I should be able to just fit this thing from scratch, but it really does depend on how far these come out this way and all the fittings and everything like that. So I've drained down the system. I'm just gonna get the towel and double check because I really don't wanna damage this nice new carpet. And it should be slightly easier because this is timber frame wall. So there's you know a skin of OSB behind the plasterboard. So it should be slightly easier for me to fix the uh, the kind of wall brackets on. So I'm just going to double check, get all my bits together, and then I'll come back and I'll probably probably set you up on a time lapse. Yeah, the time lapse cut out because somebody phoned me, which was a bit of a pain, but. All you missed was me putting the shield lock on the right and the smart thermostatic radiator valve on the left. And when we installed these pipes, we weren't 100% sure what size we want. So for the pipe to be upright, it's here, which again, isn't uncommon, but isn't ideal. You know, it is what it is. What I'll, what I'll end up doing is bringing it up straight and then I'll have, the, I'll have an elbow which comes across and then up so that it kind of neatly stays upright like that and the fittings can be straight. So this will get trimmed down. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll figure that out. And then it'll be the same for this side over here. Very similar. So pipe will be upright and then we'll have, el you know, two elbows that break, basically bring it up underneath like that. So that, that will be fine as well. So listen, I, I'm fully aware that this is not going to win any awards, this kind of soldering and stuff, uh, but I'm really pleased with it. This is the first time I've ever soldered in my life. I have never, ever soldered another joint. And also, to be fair, I haven't pressure tested it yet. 
because I've taken all the other radiators off, so I have to do all of those before I can then test these. But I'm pretty happy with them. In fact, I'm very happy with them. I'm a DIYer, I'm not a plumber, and I've done the best I can to make it fit, and it's secure, and it's sturdy, and it works. Well, I hope it works. So I'm gonna go and do the next one now. I'm gonna push, push the bed back, put that back in its place, like this. There we go, right, so on to the next one now. So I'm gonna go and do my son's bedroom. It should be this one in here. So what I'll probably do is I, I may leave the video here, I may just end it, or I might give you a quick wrap up at the end. You've seen me uh, put in a replacer radiator, you've seen a new one go in from scratch, you've seen it getting piped in. So it may well be that we just leave that video there. And thank you for watching. If it's your first time on the channel, please do like, comment, subscribe, all of that. If you're a returning visitor, thank you for the continued support, it really does make a big difference. And if this video was really helpful to you, there is a super thanks option and there's also Patreon links for support down below as well. So have a think about it. If it's, if it's been useful to you, uh, thank you very much. If not, I will see you on the next video.